back for another floss tube video. Um, today is July 3rd. Um, it's been about a month since my last video. I did come back. Surprise, surprise. Um, and it's been a pretty productive summer. Like, June was good. Um, got things done around the house, worked on some projects I had planned, did some stitching, of course, hopefully, because that's why we're here, and um, did some sewing, made some bags. Um, definitely took a lot of naps. It's been kind of that summer high, um, hibernation mode a little bit since it started to get super hot around here. Um, we had some interesting weather here in Oklahoma as usual. Definitely, um, I know, I know some people were out of power for about a week after we had our wind storm, um, a week or so ago. Um, I thankfully was able to, um, get power back about maybe a half a day, 15 hours later or so after the storm hit. So for those of you out there that weren't so lucky. I, I, I'm sorry. I feel for you. I know, I know that's super stressful. And I know some of you out there are experiencing crazy weather situations as well. So hopefully everybody's staying cool, staying happy. Um, yeah, tomorrow's July 4th, um, our independence day. So I hope everybody has a, a good independence day. Um, if you're here in America, Bernie's over here wishing everybody a happy Independence Day too by throwing her toys around. She has has this wonderful shell of a toy. I call it her Elefante Tiger Lily because it switches back and forth in between the elephant and the tiger. It's been um, defluffed or de-stuffed. I don't know how you would want to phrase that. And it's still hanging on by a thread. So tiger, elephant, Bernie's favorite toy right now. So let's talk about stitching. I have some interesting things. I have, not interesting, I made a boo-boo. We're gonna start with a boo-boo, you guys. So it's actually on, of all things, the Alexanders of, let me attempt this, Lit, Lit Trafen, Linton Trafen of 1829. We're gonna call them the Alexanders. It's the one with my funky 1960s, style people in the corner and all the beautiful um, letters and colors and the funky peacock. We decided that was a peacock, right? Um, well, when I started this, it must have been late at night, must have been on a whim, and I must not have been paying attention. So I was working on this and I got myself all the way, I need to be careful because I think there's a needle in there if there is. Okay. I got, <laughs> I got myself all the way over to the funky peacock rooster thing. And then I'm like, you know, that's not a lot of space left. I still have like several, several little designs to do over here. I've got all this fabric over here, but I measured it out. I'm like, I pulled out my handy dandy tape measure and I'm like, um, what did I do? Why did I do this? I'm only gonna have like an inch of fabric. It's like 11 and a quarter inches long. And I'm literally left after I measured it with an inch. And a little bit of that is the salvage on this side. So my conundrum is I can either sew extra fabric to the side when it comes time to framing and hope that gives me enough. I don't like thick borders as it is. So I would only really need like a quarter of a, of a strip of fabric for a border and then just use the extra fabric to help bind it on the back or lace it on the back, or I use all the extra fabric up top and we start anew and do it right. I am gonna say I've actually bought a corner gauge. After this experience, I learned not to eyeball things or I don't know. We're gonna say I was on Z-Quill. Sometimes I use Z-Quill to fall asleep. I took Z-Quill and clearly made bad decisions. So what would you do? What are your thoughts? What, what should we do? Should we start over? Should I finish this little section, turn it into a funky little something or other, like a drum, I don't know, and then just start anew? Should I continue and just add extra fabric? Opinions, you know? I figure regardless, one way or the other, it's all gonna turn out. But someone with more experience might be able to help me on this one. So give me your thoughts. I would love to hear them, your feedback. Guide me. 
because I made a doozy of a mistake on that one. So that's the Alexander's. It's kind of a bummer, but yes. Um, another one, not a mistake, just something personal preference that's changed. I actually ordered some fabrics yesterday. Um, I have two patterns and it was some of my earlier patterns that I started. One is uh, Goody Grimwood. I accidentally left it in the basket and I don't want to get up and go get it because I don't like trying to edit my videos. I just shoot them in one long stream so you get to see all the fun. And then the other one is by Plum Street as well and it's called um, A Gentleman's Daughter. And I originally had started these. I had um, extra fabric. It was platinum as Weigart Place. So it was Weigart based and it was called platinum and it was 36 count. And I was doing two threads back then, um, or at least on these, I started with two threads. And now my taste has changed my, how I view it and think is what's pretty. To me, it looks too bulky now. Back then I thought, oh, it looks like it's full coverage, you know, like it's no fabric showing through. I think um, working on heartstring samplery has kind of changed that for me because it's a 32 count with one thread. So kind of pushes the boundaries on that a little bit. But I decided we're gonna we're gonna start anew. So I ordered some fabric yesterday. And I even because the fabric was lighter than what the call for was, and I was just trying to be economical. Sorry, switch it over. And I just I had to change the, the the thread of the house and I just decided no. The reason I don't ever stitch on it is because of that. I don't like how I stitch it. I don't like having that I changed, I didn't do it with the called forth fabric. So we're gonna make that change. I went ahead and ordered that. I do wanna complete these. The only way that's gonna happen is if, if I do it right. So that one is gonna be, be taken care of. Those are coming in the mail. <laughs> So we have a thunderstorm, like I was saying. <laughs> yeah, hopefully the electricity doesn't go out. Okay, so there's that. Um, we're gonna hurry and get this done. And then I'm gonna plug in my phone and hope electricity doesn't go out. And I'm also gonna make me an egg sandwich because I'm starving and I've been putting off lunch slash dinner. So hopefully all that happens before the electricity goes. Um, the next project that I'm gonna show you guys, so yes, restarting those, definitely want to do them. Um, give me your feedback on the Alexanders. What would you do if it was your situation? And then now we'll go into an oldie but goodie, my Sunday stitch. It is um, His Eyes on the Sparrow by Heartstring Samplery. So here is the picture. FYI, I've used this guy so much or pulled him out that the end of the bag like this is the top this is the end has broken through so i had to flip it and stick it back in um i don't use the um i make a working copy of the the patterns so but i have to use it to kind of um have my cheat sheet of threads to use on the back so okay focus so last time we talked so here here's my friend this big guy. Last time we talked, I had a few of the smaller motifs up here in this corner completed, and I had the green vine for most of the uh, border done on this side. So what I did is I, I worked on some of the flowers. I still need to finish this one right here, but I really wanted to get to this big old guy down here in the corner, this big old flower. So that's what I did. I worked down, worked on the flowers. Sorry, I'm getting excited. I did the weed whacker yesterday in the backyard and it like tweaked my back a little bit. Um, sorry, focus. <laughs> um, I did the funky little moose. I wasn't sure if it was a deer or a moose. We're gonna go with moose. And then I got over to this beautiful flower. I love stitching it. It was kind of, once you get the outline done, it was fun to stitch. Um, I looked at different people's posts on Instagram and saw their big flowers. I was like, oh, that's beautiful. So I wanted to get down there and that's what I did. I then came back up. Um, yesterday, since I did yard work, I actually was tired and didn't get any stitching done. But the Sunday before, I worked on this cat um, and the rabbits and the little flowers and just kind of filled in. I feel like I definitely got some progress on that one. 
Um, it was fun. It's a good stitch. I love it. You can either do some small motifs and jump around if you're in that kind of mood, or you can kind of get to one of the bigger, bigger friends on this and do some like relaxing stitching where it's just like fill it in sometimes. Sometimes you just want to fill things in. So worked on him. Set this guy aside. Another one I worked on a couple of days was um, by Kathy Barrick. It's called Sunflower Farm. Um, when we talked last, I had originally started with all DMC, but when I got to the bottom of the house, I was hoping for more variegation in it so it looked more like siding. So I had gone to Silver Needle and picked up the called for threads. So I did that, I finished up the roof, started the siding, and then I started the funky bird on top. So there we go. I look so funny when I do this. Um, yeah. There. So that's what I got done. I probably worked on this one like maybe two or three days. Um, I definitely had days this past month where I didn't stitch. Um, I rearranged my office and took out some furniture and added some things and painted and did touch-ups. And then um, I've done a lot of yard work and gardening. So there's days where I'm just tired and mentally maybe not in a place to cross-stitch. Um, I've also been uh, crocheting. I have a blanket that I started around Christmas. So I picked up that and was crocheting a little bit as well because you can get into an even pattern with crocheting too. Um, kind of becomes a little bit mindless, just soothing. Um, and then there was just days I was tired and didn't stitch. So, so I, could, I could have gotten farther than what I did on some of these things, but I still made progress. So the next one, so I also made bags. Some days I stitched. So I made this bag, I made this one, and then I made my funky chicken one for Heart Street. So I follow um, Elizabeth Ann Can Stitches tutorial. Um, it's, it's straightforward, it's easy, it's very detailed. It's good for a newbie stitcher like me or, yeah, stitch. I wouldn't say stitching, sewing, <laughs> sewing. Um, so I follow her tutorial. I go, Hobby Lobby has those little bundles. Um, they're fat quarters of fabric. Some of the fabric you like, some of it you don't. It's relatively cheap. It's like $4.99 for a bundle. And so I just use those. Um, I pick what I like. If I've had extra fabric that I know I'm never going to personally use or doesn't really kind of fit my my aesthetic, I use that as my inside and it does well, you know? So in this one, I have Jack's Bash. Um, one of the ones that I'm really hoping that I'll get it completed before Halloween. So here we are, it's by Plum Street. There we go. And I did work on him a few days as well. Uh, probably definitely, well, I had intended to get more accomplished. Um, and I did, of course, as always, we would love to be farther along than what we are, but I did get some stuff done. So when we talked last, I had started on this little gentleman. I had done a good chunk of the tree, but hadn't finished the leaves. And I may have started on the house or had the outline of the house. I can't quite remember. So I finished the gentleman, filled in the house. I have one window left to complete, finished the tree. It was a lot of um, stop and go stitching. There'd be like five stitches of one collar, five stitches of another. That kind of stitching you had to be in the mindset for. It wasn't as smooth. And then I did some of the flowers over here. So, and then finished up this border, the inner border. So yeah, definitely progress. Definitely progress. We're gonna leave it at that. We're gonna be positive about it. So, put this guy back. Um, let's see what's next. We got a mess. We got a mess. There's a mess. Since we're on the moody Halloween theme, we're gonna go into this one. So I have, in this bag, I have two projects. They're my two Halloween projects. The first one is by Prairie Schooler. I haven't touched this one before, since before Christmas. So I pulled him out, was it last week, and spent an afternoon on this one or an evening on this one. It's called Hocus Pocus. So very cute. Let's see, and I worked on one of the squares. It's the one with the funky little cat. And this one's done in DMC, and I'd have the called for fabric. I think it's lamb's wool. This one's a 32 count, so it's an easy to see, which is good because it's very dark. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is what we've got done. 
I don't know why I set this one aside. It's a fun stitch, it's an easy stitch. I know last year I was bringing this one to work at times because I could easily see it in my office. Um, so sometimes like before school would start, I, I go in early just to get myself organized and not have, feel like I have to rush. And so there's like 30 minutes where even sometimes I'd get there before the principal. And I do like a Bible study and I'd stitch and I'd listen to music or the news and just mentally prepare myself. I don't like being late. I'm one of those. <laughs> so this was one that I was bringing in because I could easily see it in the limited lighting in my office. So the other project that lives in this bag with Hocus Pocus is Halloween at Hollyberry Farm with Stacy Nash or by Stacy Nash. Um, love this one. I know several people do have done this. I would really love to do. Um, is it the summer as well as the Christmas one of these? I looked at Silver Needle and they didn't have their pattern, so I may order those off of one, two, three stitch down the line. I need to put that on the wish list. But I pulled this one out, worked on him for a night. Because, you know, I could consistently work on something and get it all done. Or we could just kind of do whatever. Sorry, my feet are falling asleep down here. <laughs> I should have thought about this. So I did this section over here, and then I started the tree. Um, so not a huge, huge progress, but definitely something. I'm stitching this one on a 36 count murky. Um, it's darker than what the original fabric is called for, or the called for fabric is. That one's more of a light gray, but I wanted it to be really spooky. I wanted it to be dark, I wanted it to be spooky. And that is what we are doing, and I like them. Um, there we are. How do you, okay, so if you're stitching this one, please tell me, do you do individual X's on these flowers? They're, they're, it's not the same flower over and over. It's a close, a close call. Like it's not the exact same all the way down. Same with the, 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 the vines. You're not looking at the exact same thing. It's, I don't know why. I'm having a hard time getting into the rhythm doing this border. Um, I'm not somebody that will do the entire border first and then I would love to be that person, but I also find it very hard for me to keep even and make sure I hit it right. So if you are stitching this one, do you do every single X or do you do rows? Um, I know the fabric's dark enough that I could carry it um, a little bit farther, like in these little gaps, you know what I mean? It wouldn't make a difference. Um, tell me how you do it. I don't like doing both. But I also feel like I get better coverage when I do like a chain of stitching versus individual X's sometimes, especially on the whites. Um, you know how it is. Y'all know. Maybe you know. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I don't know. So yeah, that's what I have in this little bag. My two Halloween ones. I love them. I'm glad I pulled them out. Kind of sparked my interest again. So maybe with it being all thundery and lightning, Tonight will be a good night for Halloween stitching. Hopefully we have power to stitch. Um, next, let's see, there's another bag. I don't know if I've shown this one before. So when I do, that's the thing about the four, doing the fat, the fat quarters, um, a fabric instead of the a half a yard like um, Elizabeth Ann says to do. Sometimes you get a little wonky on your pattern because you don't have as much fabric to do your cutting out. But it's $4.99 for a bundle. <laughs> so, and nobody sees my patterns or my bags except for me. Well, and when I show you them. But anyways, so another one I started is by Kathy Barrick and it's Wildflowers. This guy. My cat, when I, when I stitch at night, I will like sometimes just set the bag aside on my bed and my cat loves to sleep on my bags. And so you'll get like little kitty footprints because he loves to sleep on things instead of on his bed or on the bed itself because cats are what they are. So last time we talked, I had started this one on a piece of fabric that was not the call for. It was like a Confederate gray or something gray and it was just too light and it was washing everything out. And then I went to Silver Needle and they actually had fox and rabbit seaweed, which is the call for fabric, fabric, which I'm very happy for. So I started it again, worked on it a few days. I definitely have to do this one on a bright day with good lighting because it is a darker fabric and you're using black thread to do the outline. But I am glad I restarted it because it is so much more vibrant. 
and I'm, it was a good decision to restart this one. So silver needle for the win on having the fabric and a good start. They're just pretty. I love the, the thread through. Oh, I had to steal from my stash. I used to put things on bobbin, so I unbobbinated a piece of thread because I had it and then I bought it to fit. I don't know. Ignore me. I rebob. Actually, no, I rebob. Or I put it on the thread drop and, and took it off the bobbin, so it's a little crinkly. I don't know, people. People, I do things. I do things. There's no. We do things. We do what we do. So the last one I'm going to show you that I've worked on and then I have some haul and then I'll let you go is, let's see, let's see. Oh, and here's one of the bags. So I got bag crazy. Y'all, I made bags. There's no more gallon bags. We actually have legit project bags. So this one is by Kathy Barrick as well. We know my love of Kathy Barrick and it's HL's Moth. So there you go. Can you see without the glare? Maybe, hopefully. And then here are the threads. Very pretty. I love them, very warm, almost like jewel tones. Could you say that's a jewel tone? We're gonna go with it. We're gonna say yeah. I have it on the call for fabric, it's Havana. It's a 40 count. I love this. It's a, such a beautiful, rich color. It's not something that I would normally pick, which is why I'm glad I chose this pattern. And the threads, I mean, it's small. I have to do this one with great lighting as well, but I feel like the threads are laying really well. It is kind of confetti heavy a little bit. So it's one you have to focus on and really count where you're going with it, but it's a good stitch. I like this one. And it's outside of my box with it being a 40 count, higher, a higher count but it's a good stitch. That's a solid stitch. I'm happy with that choice. So that's kind of what I've worked on. Um, the bags that I've kind of made a little bit of them. Let's show you some haul. Um, so like I said, I went to Silver Needle to get some more fabric and I bought a lot over the past year. So I have bags. I literally keep them in bags like this. So these have fabric with them, I think. This is the bag that has, they have fabric or they have gloss with them. So I'll show you what's in this one and then maybe the next video I'll show you what I have in there. So this is by Heartstring. It's called Whip It Good. Not a new one. They had it on sale or on clearance. That's the yellow dot up there. Um, thank you, Silver Needle, on your clearance. So this one's cute. I thought this was, it's very catchy. It says Whip It Good, has some great design. So I ordered the called for fabric for this one. Um, from one, two, three stitch yesterday. And this one as well, we've got two. This one is called Hoop, there it is. Give me some 90s rap and R&B any day. The 90s, the 90s had some great music, you have to admit. And if we can tie that into cross stitch in any way and just complete the cheesiness of it all, I am down. So the next one, oh no, this doesn't have fabric, but these are some fun ones. Okay, so Barbara Anna Designs Garden of Dreams. These are so cute. I love the little girls. And I think it's cute to finish it in a hoop. That would be fun. And that would actually go well in my office. I need to do this. It's decided it needs to be stitched at some point in my life. The next one is Teresa Coget, and it says, come to the garden. Okay. Love the flowers, love the deep red. I'm not, my house is not, I, I think you guys can probably tell. The, the, the clock on the wall is red, but nothing else in my house is red. Um, I feel like my mother is very much of a person that decorates with deep, warm, rich colors, and I've always been on the cool end of the spectrum compared to that. So, but I love the red. That was kind of a weird rabbit hole trail, y'all. I'm hungry, I need more caffeine, my ADHD. I apologize for this video today, it's a doozy. Um, so yeah, and it's got the little cherub face up in the corner, or up in the middle, in the, the butterfly. Oh, that one's gonna be so pretty. It needs to be done. It needs to be done, people. Don't you love when you see your receipts from 123Stitch and Silver Needle in here? I'm like, why do I keep those? I shouldn't keep those because then I see how much I actually spend. I do have my 
Oh, I showed you guys these um, way back in the day. But my Country Cottage um, Needleworks. So I have several of them done and I, I have most of the school year done. And they're in my um, on my desk at work. Maybe I'll insert a picture of the frame. It may not be pretty. Um, so yeah, these I have all of the months I need to do them. I have them kitted up with the floss. Um, some of them I did, I actually like took out of my stash because um, they're still on bobbins. I don't, um, anyways, I have these. I need to finish these. They're fun and they're really quick. So I can have the whole year, not just the school year. Um, another one is by Kathy Barrick and it's um, Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. Okay, these little witchy ladies in the middle. How can you not love them? They're so, it's so creepy. We love creepy. <laughs> don't we love creepy? I don't know why, I have a theme. I either want spring or I want fall. There's not a lot of in between on that. Um, this one's from Carriage House Samplings, which is also Kathy Barrick is associated with, and it's um, three chairs. Very cute, kind of, um, what do you call it? Folk art, artsy a little bit there. Has a fun little girl on there. It's a good one. It was also on clearance. I would have bought it without it being on clearance. Um, this one is Barbara Anna Designs. I've had this one kitted up. I know I've showed you this one before. Um, I have fabric somewhere, I think, in a big bundle that I could use, or it's like a yard. Um, but yeah, and this one's called, what are you called? Halloween, the moon laughs. And it's only two colors. Uh, it's just these two colors and you have two options. I know my thread's kind of, I can't get the thread to move y'all. And the thread's not moving. Um, there's two options you can do. You can do one that's monochromatic or you can do the one with more colorful variations of it. I chose this one. Apparently it's another Halloween thing. I guess I love Halloween. These are so pretty. And yesterday when I was ordering fabric, I tried to order the fabric for these two, but it was expensive. And I was like, you know, summer budget. So these are by Rosewood Manor. I have so many of the Rosewood Manor patterns saved on off to my wish list on one, two, three stitch. Um, this one is called Mids Midsummer's Eve. Uh, I don't know if you can see that very well. I love it. And it's beautiful. And the fabric was barn wood. And I either one, two, three stitch was out or it was kind of pricey for what it was. And I chose to go with the, the whip it, or yeah, whip it good. I chose to buy fabric for these because these were only like $6 for the size of fabric that I needed. So down the line, we'll make, we'll make choices. Or maybe Fox and Rabbit. We can make a trip to Silver Needle again one of these days. The next one is Flowers Awake. So, definitely a good one. Very pretty. I love me some flowers. It's either fall or flowers, you know? Spring or Halloween. That is where I'm at. Then, of course, in that sack, I had my um, Consider the Lilies. This one I actually bought the book in instead of doing the individual patterns. Um, I can't wait to start this one, too. I love the border on this one as well. I feel like it's going to be a fun border to stitch. So... Still need to get fabric for this one, something close that matches the other. But yeah, let me see, is there anything else in here? Oh, we just have a random piece of fabric. So this one's random piece of fabric. Oh, I wondered if I was gonna do this with this. I think that's what it was, maybe not. I don't know, I have these thoughts. Or maybe it was supposed to go with the girl. Or I just have a random piece of fabric that I have a random piece of fabric. Okay, y'all. That is what I've done. We're at 29 minutes. I hope you guys have a great 4th of July if you're here in America. I still hope you have a great 4th of July if you're elsewhere, but it doesn't have the same symbolic meaning. Um, I hope everybody still has electricity after the storm, but thankful for the rain. Give me your thoughts on the Alexanders, and I will keep you guys posted. Um, yeah, you guys continue to be awesome and continue to stitch and be wonderful. I'm going to go make me an egg sandwich and let the dog out and then find something to stitch because you know that's going to be hard to do. 
So, bye. <laughs>